Welcome to day 171 of our scripture reading and daily encouragement. Today we're going to cover Psalms chapters 23 and 24. Then we're going to jump over to Acts chapter 20 and cover verses 1 through 16. As we pick up in Psalms 23, this is one of my favorite Psalms. It's a declaration, a declaration of just being content, a declaration of joy, peace, protection. I'm going to read this in my version, the NLT, and you may know it from another version or read it from a different version, but it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you, God, are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. This is such a beautiful psalm that David has given us. God, you're my shepherd. He's declaring, you're my shepherd, a shepherd protected. A shepherd took care of his sheep. You're my shepherd. And because you're my shepherd, I have everything I need. You provide everything. That's the content piece. You have, I have everything I need that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. This is the rest. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. How how peaceful and relaxing is that picture? In the chaos of life, if we can just recite this Psalms. He leads me beside peaceful streams, lets me lie down in green pastures, as one version says. So peaceful and relaxing. If you can just picture that in your mind and let God take you there. And he says that he, re- he renews my strength. He guides me along the path that he wants me to go. See, our shepherd, God, he gives us what we need. He gives us our rest. He gives us our peace. And he renews our strength. He sh- if we follow him as our shepherd, he takes us to the places we're supposed to go. But then he says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, or you may know the version that says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, this is not a good place, right? Whether it's the darkest valley or the valley of the shadow of death, it's a scary place. But it says, even when I walk through this scary place, I will not be afraid. Or maybe your version says, I will fear no evil because God is close to me. So this is the protection. God is providing for me. He's giving me strength. He's giving me peace. And now he's protecting me no matter what I'm walking through. God protects us. He comforts us. The Lord provides and blesses us. And he says, your goodness and your unfailing love will pursue me the rest of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. This is a psalm that you can use to reset. When you don't have joy, when you're struggling, when you feel threatened, when you need peace, when you need hope, when you need to be reminded of your future being forever in God's house. This is a great place to go. Just go back to Psalms 23. Read that. Declare it over your life. Sort of close your eyes as you're reading. Read it and just close your eyes and absorb it. Picture yourself lying down in that green pasture on just a nice, perfect temperature day with sunshine and a peaceful stream flowing. It just doesn't get any more peaceful than that. And that's what God wants us to have. And that's what David is telling us we can have. Now David continues to praise God as he moves into Psalms 24. He says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Everything, everybody belongs to him. You know, we live in a time that Satan has control over the earth. God has allowed that. He is, he has to, he, he, a lot of bad things are happening because of Satan's influence in the world. But what David is saying is we got to remember the earth is still the Lord's. Satan may have control over the kingdoms, but the earth is still the Lord's. Everything in it is still the Lord's. Everything and everybody still belongs to God. He made it all. It's his. 
And he says, who can be in God's holy place? Those with pure hands and pure hearts. Guys, we have to strive. We have to strive for pure hands and pure hearts. We are not perfect. We never will be. Take that pressure off yourself. If you don't, you'll get workspace trying to work your way to God. But God does expect us to be constantly looking inward. He expects us to always be working on being more Christ-like. We're not expected to be perfect, but we're expected to get better. We're expected to be more Christ-like. We're expected to strive to be more Christ-like. We are expected to strive to be, to have pure hands and pure hearts, worshiping only him. And as David says here, not telling any lies. When we worship him only and we strive for pure hands and pure hearts, that's when we receive the Lord's blessings and have the right kind of relationship with God. David finishes the psalm by declaring that God is strong and mighty, invincible in battle, the Lord of heaven's armies. He is the king of glory. And I'm going to say that again. He's the Lord of heaven's armies. He is the king of glory. He's invincible. He's strong. He's mighty. See, sometimes we got to rely on that shepherd to protect us, to give us hope, strength, be content with what we have. But we need to be declaring how great and how mighty our shepherd is. He's strong and mighty. He's invincible in battle. He's the Lord of heaven's armies. He's a king of glory. And that's the shepherd. That's the shepherd that we want to approach with pure hands and pure hearts. So God, my prayer today is that every day you would show us what we need to do to cleanse our hearts, to purify our hands so that we can get closer to you. And we thank you for the grace of Jesus that covers our failures. Oh man, these two Psalms have been a beautiful picture of the peace, joy, strength, protection that we receive from God when we strive to worship Him with pure hands and pure hearts. We're going to transition over into Acts. As we picked up in Acts yesterday, there was a riot. There was a riot against Paul and the believers. Paul's come into town, he's spreading the good news. And now these people aren't buying the idols anymore from the silversmith. This is disrupting business. It's disrupting their way of life that was comfortable to them. But it says it subsided. And when the uproar was over, Paul gathers the believers and he encourages them. See, guys, we always have to be encouraging each other. That's why I started doing this to begin with. It's just to encourage people. So I can be encouraged as well, but Paul gathers the believers. He encouraged them. They needed encouragement because people are always coming against them, just like people are always going to be coming against, against us. This is a great model that Paul's laying out. Paul traveled to different places. He spread the good news, and that produced many believers. But then he circled back to those places later to encourage them, to check on them, to see how it's going, oftentimes correcting them. And this is important. If we go to a place to spread the gospel, or we are part, we're a part of bringing someone to be a believer or a follower of Jesus, we need to circle back to them and encourage them, strengthen them. Maybe they're part of your everyday life, so you're constantly encouraging them. But if it's someone you are allowed to bring to Christ, and you're not with them daily, you need to think about when you can go back and encourage them and strengthen them. Make sure that, that you're being that for them in their life. This life of following Jesus is not an easy one. Let's be honest about that. Jesus himself said we will be hated for loving him and following him. So we all need to be encouraging and strengthening each other. There are days when I am really just down. I feel like I'm giving it all of God. And it just maybe isn't good enough. And that's Satan working on me and attacking me. And one of you will call. One of the people in our church or a friend will call and just say, I just want to encourage you. What you said today really lifted me up. And you see, I encouraged you with this scripture reading, but then you called and encouraged me with what the scripture reading did. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to build each other up. We all need to be encouraging and strengthening each other. Don't just accept the encouragement and strength that someone's giving you. Turn around and give it to others. 
part of how we encourage each other is simply by sharing scriptures and what those scriptures mean to us and how they bring us out of low places or tough places. Maybe when someone is going through a time when they don't have peace, pointing them back to a Psalms 23 type scripture. Often reminding each other of our favorite verses is what keeps us going. And we need to take this model that Paul has shown us and be that for the church. Constantly circling back and encouraging those that God has put in our path. Maybe for you that person is in a different country because you went on a mission trip. Maybe that person is in a different city or a different state or a different county, a different town, a different church body. I'm constantly trying to encourage people that don't go to my church. I'm in contact weekly with potentially a hundred or more people through our wedding venue that don't go to our church. But if I see that they're down, I'm always trying to encourage them and strengthen them because that's our, that's our job as the bigger church body. <laughs> doesn't matter where they live, where they're from, what church they go to. Part of our job is to spread the good news. Let the Holy Spirit draw that person in. But then come back and be an encouragement to those people and build them up. So let's do that, guys. Let's build each other up. Let's encourage each other. Yes, we need to, we need to grow the body. We need to, to spread the good news so believers are brought in. Remember, that's the Holy Spirit's job to do that work. Your job is to tell the good news. The Holy Spirit's job is to draw them into it. But then our job is to come back and encourage those people. So today, I hope you are encouraged. And I hope you have a great day.